Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and welcome to our first episode of BTS, which stands for Behind the Scenes. Now what is BTS? Well, I've been working in the industry now for over 20 years as a concept artist, illustrator, director, supervisor for companies like Fantasy Flight Games, Electronic Arts, Disney, and you name it. And there are a lot of things that go into being a professional artist that don't necessarily pertain to art directly. They aren't necessarily painting or drawing related. How to master Photoshop, how to find a job, how to put together a portfolio, how to negotiate a salary. These are all things that we need to learn to get good at, but don't necessarily have access to that kind of training. So here, we aim to solve that for you. But remember the most important thing here is you. This is for you. So your feedback and your suggestions are absolutely crucial to keeping the series going. If you have any ideas on future episodes of BTS, let me know in the comments below. So to initiate this new series, I thought I would share with you some of my most valued Photoshop saving tips when it comes to working and navigating your way through very, very complex files. You might think that a big popular studio has a very, very meticulous work method. Sometimes yes, sometimes not at all. And I've worked for certain studios where you'd get files that were ridiculously huge and ridiculously disorganized. And I had to manage to navigate my way through these very complex scenes in a timely manner so that I could work in a more efficient manner. So today we're going to do exactly that in Photoshop, but we're going to be focusing exclusively on the layers panel. If of course you're a seasoned pro and I'm teaching you stuff that you've known for the last 15 years, don't hum and haw. I'm pretty sure there's something in there for everybody. So stay tuned. As you can see over here, I have my painting Corpse Bride. You can actually watch the entire making of on my YouTube channel. And this file has been separated into different layers with different things on them. Nothing too crazy, but enough to get us started. You can see here that I have a few groups that if I expand, I have certain effects in there and I have different layers where I've separated the necklace and all that kind of stuff. Normally when I'm working on a painting, I try to keep myself down to the minimum number of files necessary. I don't like to hoard hundreds of hundreds of layers. It makes it harder for me to find my way through and it makes things just messier. So when I reach a certain point in my painting when I'm happy, I like to start to compress things down and, and reduce things. It keeps the file sizes smaller and it makes it easier and less stressful for me to work my way around it. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at is just on how to hide and show a layer. Pretty straightforward. So we can just click on an eyeball here to hide and show different parts of my drawing. I can hide or show multiple layers by clicking and dragging over those eyeballs like that. What if I want to hide everything but her necklace? Well, I can hold down the Alter Option key and click on that eyeball and you'll notice that it hides everything but that particular layer. Something you're going to find super practical. The other thing is selecting layers. So I can, of course, select individual layers by just clicking on them. But there are a few different ways you can select multiple layers. One way is to click on one layer, and this includes groups, as you can see, because I've also got a group selected. And I can hold down the Shift key and click on a second layer, and you'll notice that it selects everything in between. However, more often than not, you're probably going to want to select individual layers, in which case you hold down the command or the control key and you click on individual layers. If I want to deselect individual layers, remember to keep your finger on command or control and click on that layer. If I have multiple layers selected and I don't have my finger on the modifier command or control, then it deselects everything. In fact, that's how you deselect layers, by letting go of the modifier. Modifiers are keys that modify other commands. So there's B, but then there's also Alt B, Control B, Shift B. The Shift, Alt, and Control are considered modifiers because they modify another command. Now, another keyboard shortcut you can use that I don't use that often, but if you like it, I'll at least let you know what it is, is a way to navigate around the layers without actually clicking on them just by using keyboard shortcuts. And the way you do that is by holding down the Alt or Option key and clicking the bracket keys. And you'll notice that that's making me select higher or lower layers. Like I said, I usually prefer to just click on the layer, but to each their own. Another cool thing you can do is actually change the order of a layer. So depending on which layer I've got selected, I can move it up or down in my layers panel just by holding down the Command or Control key and hitting those bracket keys up or down. So you'll notice I've just moved my effects folder up or down. If I want to move the smoke layer down, I can do it like that. Pretty practical. Of course, the quicker, easier, and more precise way of doing it is just to click it and drag it like that. You'll notice as well that when I clicked and I dragged, I would get a little line indicator on my layer panel. That's letting me know exactly where I'm dropping it like that. Another little subtlety to take into account is, notice that I have an expanded group right now. If I want to drop this smoke into the group, if I click and I drag here, 
you'll notice that there's a little line that shows up showing that I'm moving it up. Well, by doing so, you notice that the little icon shifted over to the right? That's indicating to me that I've actually dropped it into the group. If it's not in the group, it'll pop out like that. So now when I close the group, you'll see that the smoke is not part of that particular layer. Now, what if I want to create a new group? Well, the keyboard shortcut for that is to, well, first I'm going to select my layers holding down the shift key, and then I'm going to do command or control G. Now inside this group, I can create other groups. So I can go in here and do command or shift G again. And in there, I can go in and create other groups. I can do groups inside groups, inside groups, inside groups. Do I recommend it? No, <laughs> because that just makes it harder for you to go and fish through different groups to find it. I don't see a practical use for it. Maybe a group within a subgroup is one thing you can do if you really have got a lot of stuff going on that you want to keep organized into different categories. But otherwise, like I said, any of these keyboard shortcuts, any of these organizational tools, try not to overdo them because that defeats the purpose of organizing it. The whole purpose of organizing is to speed up your workflow, not slow it down, right? So if you're going and fishing through folders trying to find things, you're just doubling and tripling up your work to get to a specific layer, all right? Now, if I want to ungroup, then it's command or control plus shift plus G. So you can see here, we've got this group within a group within a group within a group, right? Well, if I do command shift G or control shift G once, I'm gonna ungroup it, but there's still a group. If I wanna keep ungrouping and ungrouping until I'm left to, with the bare layers, I have to keep hitting command shift G or control shift G and I'll continue to ungroup and ungroup until I've hit those raw layers. Now, another super practical tip is to merge layers. When I'm working in Photoshop, I always like to work with the minimum number of layers possible. So let's say in the construction of a character, I ended up creating an extra 12, 15 layers. At a certain point, I wanna compress them down into one because I find that going and trying to figure out what's on which layer is time consuming. Once I'm happy with something, I compress it and then I continue working forward. So the way to merge down is Command or Control E, like that. And you'll notice that I've merged them down. Now these had two different blending options to them. This one was Multiply and this one was Normal. So by merging them, I've messed up the blending option not recommended to do. But in this particular case, I'm not gonna worry about that because it's just a demonstration and I'm gonna merge it down like this. Now I can also merge multiple layers using the same command. If I grab multiple layers and I hit Command E or Control E, I merge them all onto a single layer together. One little quick tip on the side is, I always keep my character and my background and my foreground elements on separate layers throughout the entire production. You never know when your client's gonna say, can you shift this over to the right? Can you add a little color to the background? Can you add a little bit more contrast to your character, etc." If you flattened everything onto a single layer, then making those tweaks could take hours or days because you have to work around things and paint around things. You don't wanna do that. If I wanna add color to my background, I just create a layer between my character and my background layer and I add the color and it takes two seconds. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a huge headache, a huge nightmare to have to deal with. One of the major benefits of working in Photoshop is the fact that you can do things on separate layers and work in a far less destructive manner, okay? In this particular case, however, I'm gonna undo that merge and I'm just gonna keep it like that because I do wanna keep these on separate layers. Now, another incredibly practical thing you're gonna be using religiously is duplicating layers, right? So the keyboard shortcut for that is Command or Control J. So let's say if I have layer 63 over here, and I do a Command or Control J, I'm going to copy that particular layer multiple times. I can also do this with multiple layers. So let's say if I have multiple layers selected and I do a Command J or Control J, I've just copied all three of those layers simultaneously. If I have a group, I can copy the group, Command or Control J, and I've just copied that group and I've doubled it up. Another way you can duplicate a layer is to just to grab it and drag it over to the little layer button right here, which is the little page button over here. And when you let go, it'll make a copy of it. However, I have a way I like duplicating layers that's a lot quicker, a lot faster, a lot more efficient. It also gives you a little bit more control. And that's to hold down the Alt or Option key and just click and drag that layer up or down. So let's say if I have this layer over here, let's delete that because I don't think we need this. Let's say I want to make a copy of this. I can just hold down Alt or Option and make a copy and move it wherever I want. There's a couple of specific reasons why I like to duplicate directly in my layer panel like this. Number one is when I wanna make a backup of something. So let's say I'm working on the necklace over here. I wanna keep working on it, adding detail to it, but I don't wanna risk screwing things up. So I hold down Alt or Option, I make a copy of it, and then I hide that original layer. Now I can go on the new layer, edit it, and I'm not worried about doing anything destructive. If I screw anything up, I always have that backup. 
The other reason is when I want to make a copy, but duplicate it in exactly that same precise location. I don't want to make a duplicate and have it move anywhere. So if I want to have extra copies of something, I just make a duplicate and that duplicate is in exactly the same layer as the one behind it. I haven't moved it out of the way. So those are two reasons why I like to make copies directly in this particular panel. And finally, of course, I can duplicate multiple layers using exactly that same technique. I just select multiple layers, hold down Alter Option, and I click and I drag. Now another super practical organizational tool that I love to use is coloring my layers. So for instance, if I don't want to lose track of that necklace layer, you can right click on the eyeball and choose a color like that. I can also select multiple layers and choose a color and it'll color all of those layers. If I don't want a color, I can just do no color and I remove all the color. Now this is something that has saved my butt a million times when working with very large, very complicated files. Let's say I want to go into my effects folder and tweak my effects and stuff like that, but there's a lot of layers in there. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on and I don't want to lose track of those layers. Well, you can right click on the eyeball for that layer and if I choose a color, you'll notice that when I expand it, all of those layers have now been colored with that color. So now I can ungroup it Commander Control Shift G, like that. Now I can go in here, tweak whichever specific thing I want to tweak. Let's say with this blue, I want to come in here and change the color to this yellow color. Now I didn't lose track of which ones are which. I can come in here, I select them all, Commander Control G, and there you go. I haven't lost track of anything. Super practical. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is changing the opacity of a layer. Let's say you're doing a certain effect and you just want to give it a slight wash, maybe you want to do a fog effect or you don't want it to be too opaque, you want it to have a nice transparency, you can come in here to the opacity and you can just move this slider down like that if you'd like to. Or move it up to whichever opacity you want. However, you can also change your opacity using keyboard shortcuts. So if I'm in the move tool, to access the move tool you can either click up here in the top right corner with the arrow key. It's only going to show a crosshairs arrow key like this if you're on a newer version of Photoshop. The older one was just an arrow, okay? You also won't get this live video preview of it as well. But the keyboard shortcut for the move tool is V for Victor for the move tool. And while you're in the move tool, if I hit any number key, it's going to change the opacity of that layer. So I hit 9 for 90, 4 for 40, 2 for 20. If I want to go back to 100, it's 0. 0 is always 100 in Photoshop, like that. If I want a specific number, not that I ever find a practical use for a specific number, you tap two numbers quickly. So if I wanted 57, I do 57 quickly. And you notice it gave me 57. Of course, I'd like to keep that at 100% opacity. Second bonus, how to change your blending options with keyboard shortcuts. When I'm experimenting in Photoshop, I like to be able to cycle through my blending options really quickly. Well, there's two ways you can do it. You can grab your mouse and you can click and you can just drag over different ones. A second way you can do it is to click on it and then click on it again so it's highlighted in blue and then, then just scroll your mouse wheel like that. However, you also have a keyboard shortcut for that. Again, you need to be in the move tool for this. If you hold down shift and you hit the plus or minus keys, you'll notice that it also cycles you through those blending options. So let's say I'm just sitting there, I just hit V for the move tool and then I just cycle through and I found, ooh, I like that. Nice ghostly amulet she's got on. Very cool. So, hopefully you enjoyed today's quick tips. In our next episode, we're going to be looking at the actual active work area. And we're going to be combining both the layers panel and the work area together. So we'll be balling in Photoshop and organizing our files at lightning speeds. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And please, if you have any suggestions for future episodes of BTS, please let me know in the comments below. I love your suggestions. That's the whole reason why I'm doing it in the first place. Remember, this is for you. And of course, if you want to pursue a professional art career and you want to improve your art skills, I have my private online mentorship, Lucid Pixel. You can check out all the information below. All right. Happy painting. See you next time.